Hello, I'm Brett Hensig, the Milwaukee Art Museum's Youth and Family Programs Educator. I'm also an artist. No matter what type of art an artist makes, most use sketchbooks and drawing to help. Sketchbooks are where artists record their ideas, things that they see around them that inspire them, and where they practice their drawing. As you can see, I use many different kinds of sketchbooks and drawing pads. I choose the right kind of paper, size, and style of my sketchbook for the type of drawing I plan to do. I love observational drawing, or drawing from things that you see around you. I also love watching animals. I'd like to take you on a tour of the drawings I made of animals that I've observed. One of the easiest ways to observe animals is in your own home. Pets are a great place to start. If you don't have pets of your own, like my cat and my dog, you can always find friends or family that might let you draw theirs. This is a drawing of Blue, the Great Dane, curled up for nap time on his bed. Pepper is a bit of a shy dog. I tried capturing that by having her eyes peeking up from the bottom of the page. Chewy is a proud and noble Pekingese. His breed comes from royal lineage. I wondered what Marley was thinking about, so I used my imagination to draw a pile of bunny rabbits. Speaking of rabbits, Mini Ninja is my own pet. There are many different pets that you can find to draw. Like my goldfish, Horatio. Backyard wildlife is a great way to practice drawing animals, like this crow. I also have a crow friend that lived at the Humane Society that I would draw quite often. This is a bird that I saw in Colorado. It's a magpie. I hadn't seen one, so I drew it. There were also different types of rabbits that I wasn't used to, so I'd made sure to study those. Studies are drawings that help you understand how something looks, or maybe how something works. Prairie dogs are some of my favorites. Their heads were difficult to draw, and their faces, so I tried a lot of different versions on this page of my sketchbook. You don't need to travel far to find interesting animals. These frogs were from Greenfield Park, near my home. The Wisconsin State Fair also gave me lots of inspiration for animals I don't get to see often, like cows, chickens, all different types, and sheeps and goats. I love drawing their interesting horns. I'm really interested in the way that their horns spiral around themselves, so much so that I started studying different horns that I found on the different sheep and goats. Sometimes you can't help but make many small drawings, like horses with riders. They were moving too fast. Once they were in their stables, though, they liked to pose for a longer portrait. Another great location is a zoo. The Milwaukee County Zoo is a favorite place of mine to draw. You can see many interesting animals and the way they move, like seals swimming through the water or giraffes, one of the most unique and, for me, difficult animals to draw. I try different materials in my sketchbook, like ink for this shaggy maned lion. Here I tried charcoal, pencil, and ink to create bears. They are also difficult for me. I tried to recreate the muddy and dusty hide of an elephant with ink. I then drew the elephant as I saw it with lines through a charcoal pencil. I thought elephants were so interesting, I even spent more time to do a portrait of one. Sometimes only a certain part of the animal will inspire you, like the way the neck curves around this flamingo, or the beautiful and ferocious face of a tiger. You don't have to spend a long time on each drawing. This gorilla isn't from the zoo, it was made at the Milwaukee Public Museum. Natural history museums are great places to draw. You can spend as much time or as little time as you like on your drawing, capturing all the details in the animal and in the scenery of the diorama. Let's see how you can make a sketchbook with things you can find around your home. To make your own sketchbook, start by collecting paper you'd like to draw on. An assortment will work as long as they're all the same size. Use a thick piece of paper, a thin piece of cardboard, or other sturdy material that can be folded to make a cover, 
Again, make sure it's about the same size as your paper or slightly larger. Fold your papers and your cover in half to create a folded edge. This is called the spine of the book. Open your book flat so that you can get to the inside of the spine. Here, you'll make holes. These holes will be used to attach things to bind your book together. Binding is what holds the pages and the covers of a book together as one. You can use a stapler to make the holes and add the attachers in one step. The staple itself is what will hold it together. If you don't have a stapler that will reach to the spine of your book, you'll want to use a hole punch to make your holes or a pencil. Be careful when using a pencil to make holes. You don't want to accidentally make a hole in your hand. You may want to get a grown-up's help for this. Once the holes are put in the spine of your book, you can use attachers like string, yarn, or even twist ties. Tie a knot or twist your attachers together at the spine. Now that your sketchbook is held firmly together, you can personalize the cover to make it your own. Now get out and start sketching.